All right, welcome to a uh, sad episode of Inappropriate Earl, but uh, I wanted to do it before the uh, WWE put out their phony bullshit tribute tonight on Raw. Uh, As many of you know, a good friend of the comedy community and a legend in the wrestling community. Uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper passed away on, uh, I think, Thursday uh, morning, Friday morning, late Thursday night. I'm still not sure, and uh, it was a real sad day for all of us. Um, Roddy was actually supposed to come on uh, my podcast, Inappropriate Earl, at 2 o'clock that day, and I actually texted him. Uh, one o'clock saying hey I, I got your water i'll see you in an hour and then uh a couple of minutes later i got a text from a family member of his saying he wouldn't be able to make it he had an emergency and uh then uh, about five minutes after that i saw on tmz that he had passed away and started feverishly um combing the internet just for any confirmation and Sadly, uh, it was true. So, uh, you know, I think I cried more in the next three hours than I did at either of my parents' funerals. So that is a testament to the impact that Roddy had on not just me, but uh, a lot of people in the L.A. stand-up community. Because, you know, he was like a superhero, when I was asked to, a couple months ago, start co-hosting the uh, Piper's Pit podcast, uh, you know, I was told that, you know, most episodes would be recorded Wednesdays at like 9 in the morning, and uh, if any of you know me, you know that I am not a morning person, but because I really wanted to be in a room with Mr. Piper, I said, sure, I'll do it. And I remember that first uh, podcast we did, I think it was about staying in WrestleMania, and I was really upset about staying losing to Triple H. And, you know, I I went in there, and I'm really tired. I think I was out doing comedy till I don't know, 3 in the morning the previous night, and uh, got in there, and I'm basically falling asleep in my chair and then Mr. Piper walked in and I instantly uh, had this energy that came from I'm not sure where to this day and for the next almost two hours uh, I felt like I was uh, the ultimate warrior running to the ring because it was an amazing feeling to be sitting across from someone I watched on tv as a kid and uh i hated him as a kid that's the funny thing and uh the few interviews i've done since his death you know the number one question i get was what was he like and i tell people that you know when i was a little kid i hated him when he uh you know hit jimmy superfly snook in the head with a coconut a real coconut (laughs) um I said, wow, this guy's kind of an asshole. And then, uh, he, you know, I'm not going to remember the guy's name. It was uh, Frankie Hernandez or something like that, the jobber on Piper's Pit, where he basically, you know, beat the shit out of him, told him he sucked. And uh, you just really had uh, a feeling of, wow, this guy's a dick. And then when I met him, he couldn't have been any opposite any more opposite than that he was like the nicest sweetest caring person on earth that i'd ever met in 15 years of doing stand-up and uh you know i a lot of people ask me how i met him and uh a great comic by the name of steve simone Brought him into the comedy community a couple of years ago, 
And Roddy started uh, showing up at the comedy store late night. And if you've ever been to the comedy store late night, you know it's kind of a zany place. Anything goes. Uh, and it's just the best place on earth. It's literally like the bar in Star Wars where you have every unsavory character in Los Angeles. Uh, they all meet up there because they know how fun it is and how wild it is. And, uh, you know, Roddy was, he would always be very quiet. And, you know, of course, all the comics who were, say, probably over 25 and male uh, instantly knew who he was. And, you know, oh, my God, that's the guy in WrestleMania 1. You know, he was WrestleMania. Without Roddy, there is no WrestleMania because Hulk Hogan and Mr. T needed that bad guy to go up against and there really weren't many bad guys at that time that could match Hogan's uh, good guy image and uh, Roddy was was the only one really to be honest with you and uh, so I met him a few times up there and uh, got to know him and he, he was kind of shy actually you wouldn't think uh, someone who would hit another grown man over the head with a coconut on live TV would be shy, but he was always very quiet, and, uh, you know, he knew we all loved him, and, I mean, it really was like meeting Superman. It was like seeing your favorite comic book hero walking around at the comedy store. And uh, he started to go up, do stand-up a little bit, and... Uh, you know, he didn't really do stand-up, per se, like jokes. He would do more stories. And, uh, you know, it was uh, it was weird. You know, he seemed vulnerable up there. You know, because sometimes, you know, right now the comedy store is in, in a huge resurgence. And it's packed late night from open till close. But uh, back when Roddy was uh, first getting up there, it was wasn't the most amount of people late night and so he'd go up in front of maybe 10 people and you know here's a guy who you know been in front of 50,000 people getting cheered booed and he seemed like he didn't have a worry in the world but at the comedy store late night you could tell he was uh I don't know if the word's nervous or not but uh you could tell he was like, wow, this is harder than it looks. So when we would see that he maybe would run out of stories to tell, and not that he could ever run out of stories, but, you know, you're only given about 10, 15 minutes up there. And uh, all the comics in the back, you know, we're all wrestling fans. We would just, you know, yell out stupid questions. And uh, once again, if you've ever been to the comedy store late night, you know that, in the back row, uh, a lot of the late night comics, uh, like myself, Tony Hinchcliffe, uh, Jordan Lee, and, and uh, you know Matt Edgar, Lucas Hurl, uh, we yell some pretty wacky stuff out at Roddy, you know, and he he would answer every question, and uh, you know I would ask him. You know, how big Mark Henry's shits were. And uh, was Kamala really from Uganda? And he would, you know, answer the question first of all. And then he would go into a story about, you know, Mark Henry or Kamala. You know, I asked him uh, if Akeem, the African dream, was really black. And he would tell a story about one man gang. And then a story about Akeem. And then a story about Slick. And... You know, it was just uh, the most bizarre question and answer, que you know, uh, session you could ever imagine. And then he would get off stage, and what I thought was really cool is, you know, usually, usually there'd be about two or three comics uh, after him, and he would stay in the back and very quietly watch every comic who went on after him. Because I think in his mind... He thought, hey, I'm I'm getting to go up ahead of them. They've been doing this longer than me. I'm going to show them the respect that they just showed me. And then he'd go in the main room in the dark and play piano. 
until we closed. And uh, then he'd go in the parking lot and answer more stupid questions that w we would ask him. And, uh, you know, he was just the greatest guy on earth. And it was a real honor the last uh, three or four months of uh, me co-hosting his podcast. Um, just to get to know him a little better. You know, he was... I can uh, I can call him a friend, which is pretty neat for me to say about um, you know one of my childhood idols, and uh, you know he was just an amazing guy, and uh, you know the word legend is very much overused. You know, uh, living legend, and in a lot of sports that I like hockey and football and UFC uh, he really was a, a legend and uh, he's the number one bad guy of all time and he didn't need any gimmicks he didn't need uh, to crack open any beer cans and toss them out in the crowd he made you hate him and uh, you know after his matches he, he'd, he'd go to children's hospitals and with no fanfare and no cameras, no pictures. Um, and it was just a, an honor to, you know, call him a friend. And, uh, you know, the, the five or six podcasts I did with him were just amazing. I mean, I would just stare at him while we're talking <laughs> and uh, go man, you're the guy from They Live. And, like, it was just, uh, you know, I'm speechless. And for those of you who know me, I'm not, I'm rarely at a loss for words, but, uh, you know, I just hope that uh, he's out of pain now and uh, looking down on all of us. And uh, it's kind of funny, this, past Saturday night um, was names night at the comedy store and uh, after 15 years I got my name on the wall there and uh, it's right out in front and I know Roddy would have been there but the uh, the comedy store was nice enough to put uh, rest in peace Roddy Roddy Piper on the marquee and it was literally right above where my name was and uh you know, I'm not too religious or anything, but uh, I just, I know he was looking down on, down on me that night, and, uh, you know, I don't know what else more I can say about him. I mean, it, you know, if, it, if he was any less of a legend, I'd probably talk for another 20 minutes and pump up his reputation, but, uh, you know, the man needed no <laughs> pumping up from me, certainly. And, uh, you know, he, he has four beautiful kids and a beautiful wife, and uh, I can't, I know how sad we are. And uh, even though I've, I've met his son, Colt, I've met the others, but uh, I think I can speak for everyone listening to this that uh, we all loved Roddy a lot. And... Um, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said what I said when I started off this podcast about the WWE, you know, thing on Raw tonight. I'm sure they'll, you know, all go out there and shed tears. But, you know, if they loved him so much, I don't think they would have had their superstars, uh, you know, not do his podcast, you know, which is the one thing I hate about wrestling, you know. They'll drive you into the grave, but they'll give you a great tribute on Monday Night Raw. So, you know, and a lot of people ask me about the beef he had with Stone Cold the last couple months. You know, he never really talked about it with me. Um, you know, I know on the first podcast network we were on, we got, uh, you know, there's all kinds of rumors that, we, you know, we got fired, we got kicked off. And then we went to another podcast network, and I think we did two episodes there, and we were uh, not on it the third week. 
you know, I have my own opinions about, uh, you know, certain uh, people uh, following us around, uh, making sure it would be as tough as humanly possible for Roddy to have a voice. You know, I can't prove anything, so, you know, I just find it weird that a very, very popular podcast uh, couldn't find a home. I don't think that's an accident. So, uh, the people who are living on this earth today, you know who you are. And, uh, you know, to take away a man's voice is, is pretty fucking pathetic. But that's the world of pro wrestling. So, um, it's, it's a pretty short podcast. Uh, but I just wanted to say uh, to all the fans out there, Roddy's... Uh, he loves you guys and he did the podcast for you and you know he didn't need to do it and uh, you know he traveled all around the country and world to go to autograph conventions and and meet the fans and and he didn't have to do it you know he's he's done pretty well for himself and you know the fact that at 61 years old he was traveling probably four to five days of every week that I knew him uh, just so he can sign an autograph picture for a kid or a 50-year-old man is a uh, pretty amazing feat. So, uh, and I thought it was really cool how uh, Ronda Rousey dedicated her win in Brazil Saturday night to uh, Roddy. I know they were close and... Uh, you know, when you see her tear up, here's the toughest woman on the planet. You know, when you see a 46-year-old comic cry for three hours, you know, that, that's a testament not to me or Rhonda or anyone else who cried, but it's a testament on the impact that Rowdy Roddy Piper had on all of our lives. So uh, I guess this is it. I hope I didn't... Uh, you know, sound too uh, sad or bitter, but uh, it's just, it's a real bummer to lose him. And uh, we all love him. And uh, um, thanks for all the support the last couple of days, the private messages and whatnot. And, uh, you know, Rowdy, I know you're up there. And uh, I'm going to end this podcast like I did every one of your podcasts. And, um,. You know, it's awful cold in my condo right now. I sure wish I had a Rowdy Roddy Piper signature t-shirt on. Gee, you know what? I think I'm going to go on RowdyRoddyPiper.com and buy one. So, I love you, Roddy. Thank you very much for letting me in your life. And... I hope you're having a good time with all your friends up there. So, thank you guys very much.